Welcome to your English Aid Concept video. This video takes the place of your class lecture, saving class time for valuable discussion. Treat this video as you would a class lecture. Pay attention carefully and take notes. If you wish, pause the video or rewind it to understand something you missed. Bring questions to class. These videos assume that you understand many literary concepts taught in seventh grade. If you feel uncertain about these concepts from then, feel free to review seventh grade videos. Okay, let's go. Today we're discussing the short fiction concept of static and dynamic characters. To begin, we should review the concept of character. A character is a literary representation of a person composed of behavioral traits and motivations. To sum it up clearly, this is a person that has traits. So every character is endowed with some kind of quality, and we call those traits. It's important to understand traits when we're understanding character, and as we discuss character through class, we will focus continually on the traits that they display. Traits can be summarized by nouns or adjectives, such as courage or courageous. We could say that a character has courage or that a character is courageous. Either way of describing the character would be accurate and specific. Finding words that describe the behavioral traits of characters is vital to discussing and understanding those characters. Courage is merely one example. We could talk about the kindness of a character, how a character is selfish, how a character is arrogant, or the brilliance of a character. Any one of a host of words could be used to describe characters. There seems to be no end. But you will master words that will describe traits specifically and clearly drawn from evidence in the story. As we continue with our discussion of character, we'll see that some characters change their traits over the course of a story. Some characters do not. Some characters display only one clear trait, and some characters display a number of different traits. That's our subject today, character types. Four different character types exist in literature, and these different character types are based on the types of traits, the number of traits, and whether or not the traits change. Today we'll focus on static and dynamic characters. A static character is one that does not move, that stays still. A dynamic character is one that is full of energy and moves. We're not talking about whether or not a character sits or runs. We're talking about whether or not a character changes their traits. Let's look at the definitions. A static character is a character that never undergoes a significant character trait change. It's important to understand that this character never undergoes a significant character trait change. They are the same at the end as they were at the beginning. It's simple to prove that somebody was the same at the end as at the beginning, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But it's important to understand that a static character is one that does not change. The opposite of the static character is the dynamic character. And of course, this is a character that undergoes a significant change in character traits. They move from a character trait to usually its opposite. However, not necessarily. All you must understand is that this character changes in some significant way. They are a different person at the end of the story than they were at the beginning of the story. There are no rules for static and dynamic characters. Your protagonist may be dynamic or may be static. Your antagonist may be dynamic or may be static. A person could write a story with only static characters. An author could write a story with several dynamic characters. No rules exist, which makes literature interesting and unique. However, understanding character in stories requires you to understand the difference between dynamic and static. Let's review a little bit more deeply. Let's talk about how we would write about character. Because, of course, if you understand these definitions, you can write an extended character analysis based on the definitions. Let's start with dynamic characters. If you wish to write about a dynamic character, you must fulfill two obligations. First, you must provide evidence for two contrasting traits, one at the beginning of the story and one at the end. You would find an A trait and a B trait and evidence for them. And those two traits must be contrasting. Otherwise, it's not truly a change. Second, you must find the moment in the story which is the cause or first sign of the change. The author will give some sort of indication as to why the character has changed. And that is the moment of change which you should discuss in your writing. 
framework for a dynamic character looks something like this. We would consider a character and look at evidence from the beginning of the story and evidence from the end, and we would find trait A and trait B and consider what the moment of change is. Let's use an example from the monkey's paw. We can discuss Mr. White. At the beginning of the story, Mr. White is discussing the monkey's paw with the sergeant major, and the sergeant major advises him to destroy it, but Mr. White will not. The story reads, Pitch it on the fire like a sensible man. The other shook his head and examined his new possession closely. Mr. White is ignoring the advice of an older, wiser man regarding a dangerous object. He is pleased by the object and simply wants to play with it. He is curious and ignorant to the outcomes of the monkey's paw. We could call Mr. White naive. Naive is an adjective. Naivete is a noun. These words refer to an ignorance, a childishness, an immaturity in a character. Somebody that does not know the ways of the world and is clueless about the harms that could come from actions. This is Mr. White. Later in the story, we see that he does understand the magnitude of his actions, and he tries to wish away his son before his son, a shambling zombie, enters the house. At the same moment, he found the monkey's paw and frantically breathes his third and last wish. Mr. White now understands fate, understands his role in the world, and he has become humble. He has surrendered to fate and its power, and realized that he cannot have his son back. He changes from naive to humble. He understands the world, and he understands his place in it. The only piece of information left is the moment of change, and of course, that is the resurrection of Herbert, his son. As Herbert shambles to the door, Mr. White understands the truth of reality and fate, and he becomes humble. Could you use a different word to describe him? Could you call him arrogant at the beginning? Could you call him wise at the end? Certainly. And one character analysis may choose one term to describe Mr. White, and another might choose a different term. Both could be correct. There will be slight differences in interpretation from reader to reader. However, the mechanism for defending a dynamic character assertion is the same. Find trait A and trait B with evidence and note the moment of change. Let's turn our attention to static characters. Static characters are those characters that only demonstrate one trait throughout the story. They do not change. So this requires two tasks. One, specify a trait or traits. Two, find evidence for that trait at the beginning and end of the story. The framework looks like this. Find a character, assert a trait, and find the evidence at the beginning and the end of the story. Let's take Mrs. White from the monkey's paw for an example. We might consider that Mrs. White demonstrates the same naivete as her husband, Mr. White. We've already discussed his ignorance, so we don't need to discuss it further with Mrs. White. Let's simply look at the evidence. At the beginning, she jokes about the monkey's paw, claiming, don't you think you might wish for four pairs of hands for me? This is Mrs. White not understanding the severity of the situation. Later in the story, she, she screams, It's my boy! It's Herbert! She cried, struggling mechanically. I forgot it was two miles away. What are you holding me for? Let go! I must open the door! Her actions here contrast with Mr. White's. Mr. White understands the situation and has become humble to fate, but Mrs. White continues to be naive and ignorant to the outcomes of her actions. We see at the beginning of the story and the end of the story, Mrs. White demonstrating the same naive behavior. And that's all that's required of a static character defense. When you discuss character types in writing or verbal discussion, you must remember a few key points. Find clear words to describe traits, adjectives or nouns, but they must be clear and specific. Find specific evidence for each trait. Finding quotations or page references for your evidence is key. Do not simply summarize an overall story. Find a specific piece of evidence for each trait. And review character type definitions. Do not forget what is required of a defense of dynamic character or static character.
If you follow these recommendations, you can have sophisticated and specific discussions of character in any story.